Welcome to You Made That, the podcast about makers, making, and the things that we make. I'm your host, well, one of three hosts, Mike DeLauder, and I share the mics along with Rebecca DeGroot and Bob Blanford. How are you two this week? Bob, you go first. <laughs> oh, well, well, I'm doing great. I was trying to be a gentleman and let Rebecca go first, so I'm pausing, and she's got this look on her face like, is he going to say anything? Is he going to say anything? I, so, <laughs> to, to be fair, I caught them both off notice and just launched the show. Yes, it's yes. not even six o'clock yet. <laughs> <laughs> it is here. It's so almost you're, 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 this is essentially the pre-show that you folks are going to get today. So if we really mess up and screw <laughs> up and just go all over the place. Well, normal, that's the yeah. normal show. So sorry. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> so I finally got to finish up the 10 pen basketball court order today. Well, no, awesome. I finished it yesterday. Uh, got it delivered. Got paid for the rest of it. So that was nice. I got a little extra money that for the holidays. Good. Well, no, no. I saw those on Instagram. They look awesome. Thank you. And I'm on my way today, there right now to check them out. Today I met with Steve Grissom and Space Pens are a go. Gus Grissom's brother? Or uh, it's like his uncle? nephew. Nephew? First nephew, three times removed. Okay, this this is a really cool story. I hope you tell it again today for everybody. Well, essentially, it's uh, please what I was going to say. Please explain. I'm really confused. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so a few years ago, I'm, I'm not sure how long ago, they took some germinated seeds for gum trees up in space, and <gasps> mm-hmm. well, no, I'm sorry, they germinated them in space, and the ones that survived were planted. Back on Earth, of course. I don't think they last too long on the moon. But uh, there's one here in town. There's a couple at the state park. Well, there used to be a couple at the state park. They're not native trees. And the uh, wardens for that area were going through cutting down invasive species and cut the two trees that came from space down because they didn't know what they were. Uh, there, oh there's also a couple in Bedford and a few more around the states, but uh, they they had to trim back the tree here in town, so they saved the limbs and have asked me to make some pens out of that wood. So I'm making ten fountain pens and twenty <clears throat> roller balls. Oh wow. wow! Nice kits to the the majestic series from uh, Penn State. Ooh! Yeah. Yeah, we just got a couple of those. I'm going to have 30 of those kits in my hands. Oh, yeah, oh man. Sweet. And those are huge. Mm-hmm. Uh, not the Majestic Juniors. Uh, Majestics are oh, huge. Well, the, the regular Majestics. Yeah. yeah. The, I just got one of those. It's the first so, one. We had to buy everything for mm-hmm. it because everything I have are like the really small bushings and the small and, drill bits and yeah. the small everything. And we didn't get those. We're like, oh, my God. <laughs> So th- those those majestics are, are so they're half and half, half like well not half and half but part of them are the fountain pen majestic and part of them are the rollerball majestic. Yeah. Okay, and are you going to change out the ink refills to the uh, space refills for them? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just just a thought, you know, just throwing well, something out there. Isn't the space refill though uh, ballpoint? Ah, that's right. Your rollerball, those are ballpoint. Yeah, yep, yeah, you're right. It is. Yeah. So no. <laughs> But but it's kind of cool. <laughs> That's a cool thought. <laughs> so so will there be enough refill? left over? For, oh, will there be enough left over for you to make a pen of your own? Did you negotiate that in to make one for yourself, one blank? Oh, at least? there's there's more than enough wood to do that. Yeah, <clears throat> that'd be very cool. That'd be something worth worth you know having in your personal collection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I might also have to make a uh, bespoke pen. That'd be pretty cool, too. Are you going to stabilize first? Because since it's wood, uh, are you going to use inserts for the threading? <clears throat> oh, I would line it with resin. Um, resin, okay. The, gu- the gum tree wood is really light. I, I was shocked. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's lighter than pine wood. Mm-hmm. So there's there's not a lot of heft to it. There's not a lot of grain fiber to get a hold of anything. <coughs> it's... Excuse you. Bless you. It's not a very resinous wood, so there's there's no way it would hold threads, even if it was stabilized. 
Gotcha, gotcha. Well, that makes sense. <clears throat> so are you going to try to color match your resin? Sorry to ask so many questions, but I think this is just a really interesting project. Uh, probably, yeah, because if I did a, like a white or a black, it, it would just... It would be too stark. Yeah, it would be really stark okay. against that. It, that's one of the things okay. we were going over today is what kind of kit and what uh, finish that he wanted on it. And originally, we were talking about going with gunmetal, and once I got, mm -hmm. you know, I, I made a dowel and finished it with some uh, shellac and lacquer, and the wood is just so light that yeah. it would not have looked good against that dark gunmetal. good. What did you go with? Just uh, rhodium uh, and black ooh, tin. Rhodium, nice, nice, nice. I'm wondering if, uh, the, like, the rose gold would look good with those. Rose gold would look, look good, cool yeah. Too. Wow. Now, now, I know you said this, but I'm going to ask because th this part I, I've already forgotten. But how many total pins is it? Thirty. Thirty. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 That's pretty sweet, Mike. That's a nice deal. And that's a. I've stayed. That's a non-commissioned one. Well, it's commissioned, but I'm not charging for it because they're doing it for a fundraiser. Okay. That'd be nice. And just to have your name associated with it's kind of cool, mm -hmm. you know. Now, I stayed in a hotel um, down in, in Florida, uh, Cape Canaveral, Florida, that was owned by some of the original astronauts. And uh, I'm trying to grissom. He was one of the original astronauts. I'm pretty sure he was one of the original owners. It's not owned by them anymore, obviously, mm -hmm. or their families. It's been sold since then, but it was kind of a neat hotel. Very modern for the time, very dated today. <laughs> So, Bob, I saw you put out at least one video this week, right? Yeah, yeah. M mostly on the What You Doing channel. Um, whoops. Yes, thank you, thank you. A, a fan, just a fan chiming in there to say they really loved my work. Um, <laughs> Thor really enjoys your videos. <laughs> that's true, that's true. You <laughs> named that little dog Thor? <clears throat> that sounds like... He's, uh, a, he's a, at a, least 26 pounds. Ooh, wow. That's a little dog. He's a buster. I know. Mine's a hundred. Ron Swanson says any dog smaller than fifty pounds is just another cat. <laughs> just another cat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, videos, Bob. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I, I did a couple on the What You Doing channel, uh, mostly in relation to <laughs> two specific things. Uh, one of them is I put together a pen for a buddy of mine. Uh, his son is engaged to a young woman who is a very accomplished violinist, and. Um, Basically, he had Michael made the blank for me, and I turned the blank uh, and put. He wanted a um, he wanted a Sierra kid of all things, which I might have had one or two of those laying around because I've made them before, <laughs> a lot of them, <laughs> and I put together a pin for him. I, it turned out amazing. I got a chance to use my new tool, my new skew, which is a one inch uh, Carter and Son skew. And Ooh. it was it was awesome. It was a little bit intimidating because it's it, the thickness of the uh, tool. Uh, Michael and I were talking about it before the show. It's about twice the thickness of my Robert Sorby. So I started out, and when I beveled the, to put the ran the bevel, you know, I obviously you know you get tool on the tool rest and you lay the bevel on there. As you start to roll it into the cut. You've got so much more meat there that it kind of raises up really high. So <laughs> I had a couple of tense moments there, but it turned out turned out amazing. The pin turned out gorgeous. And the second video that I did was more me just losing my mind. Um, I got contacted Daryl Dice. I'm, you know Daryl, yeah. right, Michael? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a really nice guy, man. He's a friend of mine, friend of Michael's from the pin shows and stuff. And um, he wants to make a dip pin. And he wants to... So he contacted me because I had made one before for a young man, and I've, I've got a sign in my garage that says the Blanfords that he made for me, calligraphy sign, and he wanted a an, a long eight and a half nine inch dip pin. So uh, I sourced a pin. I didn't buy those metal inserts that you get at Penn State because I just don't like them. They're just too clunky. I don't think they hold real well. So uh, metal uh, inserts. Are you talking you about uh, the ferrule inserts? Yeah, the ferrule inserts. I really, I'm not. A, they work, but I'm just not a fan of them, and I don't think they look really clean. Mm -hmm. So I sourced, and in the video I put photos of it. I sourced a pen that they use for doing anime for drawing. It's it's an artist pen, and it has a plastic insert in it. And I put that in my chuck, and I used my um, my um, um, parting tool to turn it down to thin the wood so that I could pull it out without damaging it. 
And then I was able to epoxy that into the end of my pen, and I sourced a 9-inch bespoke rod uh, of multi-blues, because he wanted blues, and turned him about an 8.5-inch long dip pen. Um, and it's kind of funny. I don't know if I ever told the story on here before, but he, he was a young man. This was two years ago. Uh, almost three and he's in the band with my son and he is into calligraphy and anime and all of that and he wanted this pen so I go out and I pay 15 bucks for the rod and I paid at the time about nine bucks for the for the kit you know and then um, you know I had so what I got about 25 dollars in this thing 20 some odd dollars so it comes time to charge the kid and I'm like what the heck am I, I got told my wife what am I going to do I mean this kid is like 14 15 years I, I go and say hey you owe me 25 bucks even if I charged him for what I spent on it his mother's gonna think man you're ripping my kid off you you so son of a gun you know sweet old baby and at this and um she's not gonna be happy with me so i i told my son you tell him that what i want for this pen is this is my artwork i want his artwork i want my family name and the year we were established you know the year my wife and i were married and i want him to make me a sign and he made me a really nice sign it's great it's great big i i've got it out in the shop because i need to make a frame for it and I want to hang it on the wall, but it just says the Blanfords, and then it's got the established date, and turned out really nice. So, you know, I ended up just trading artwork for artwork on that one because I I didn't need some young man's mother <laughs> ticked off at me. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really cool that you did that, and I yeah. like that it's actually if he isn't already aware, it's teaching him that his artwork has value. Value, yes. Yeah, because yeah. as as a young artist, like. I tell my kids all the time, if they're just doodling and drawing all the time, and they're just giving little sketches to their friends, I was like, mm-hmm. you know you can charge for those, right? They're like, what do you mm-hmm. mean? I was like, you can get money for those drawings. Like, those are custom drawings. They ask for little personalized drawings of them or yeah. them and their boyfriend, you know? And I'm like, charge $10, $20 yeah, for each of those. Yeah. Like, make some money, earn some cash. There's always People a little sidewalk artist somewhere. When, when you go to, when you when you leave the country and you go to like uh, the, the Virgin Islands or Jamaica down there, there's always sidewalk artists who do those mm-hmm. out of proportion sketches for you. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. We yeah, pay for them. Or just like airbrushing a name on a shirt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, there's a lot of value in the arts. And if you actually have the skill to come bring stuff to mm-hmm. a really good quality oh, yeah. so yeah i tell my kids that all the time so that's really cool that you did that yep well i'm gonna stop i got a couple more things but i think i'll let rebecca get a chance to say something this week yeah she we never gets a chance to say anything. never give rebecca a chance and i don't want to be i don't want to be that guy right you know you never give rebecca a chance i don't want to be that guy so rebecca <laughs> what, what have you worked on this week any any anything at all uh, can i guess you know. i'll guess sure no <clears throat> Are you reading the show notes? No. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more gnomes. I don't. You guys can't see it in the background. I've got another gnome tree behind you, over <laughs> over there. So it's, it's it's another bouquet of hats, and I'm working on the colored hats. Everybody keeps asking for them. I've got eight or nine just regular neutral tone uh, gnomes, but nobody seems to want mm-hmm. those. I did post two of them on my Etsy, um, but nobody's bought them even though everybody's like why aren't they on your etsy and then i put them on my etsy and then nobody cares so (laughs) that's why i don't put them on etsy (laughs) it's a lot of work it's it's interesting oh i was searching etsy though and a couple weeks ago no gnomes this week oh my goodness (laughs) they're everywhere oh some people even ripped off my turntable idea my gnomey go around and like on their etsy's just there they are circling on a little motorized turn demo. I was like, <laughs> that looks familiar, but whatever, you know. <laughs> Everybody's sharing ideas. But, oh my goodness, they're everywhere. But, um, not just doing gnomes. I'm, I'm just trying to find time right now. Uh, my schedule, as usual, is a little bit crazy. I've been um, organizing my calendar. Because, uh, you know how you know that you did something and you know you have something in in your planner or your calendar and you're like, what was that thing I had to do on that date? Well, I realized a couple days ago that I scheduled a demo for March 18th, but I have no idea who I scheduled that demo with or what the demo was, but I put it in my calendar that there was a possible interactive remote demo, IRD, 
But I put no other information in. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? Why didn't I put anything down for this thing? So today I spent probably a good couple hours going through my Facebook messages, my emails, my Instagram messages, <laughs> just trying to figure out who I scheduled this demo with. Has it, <laughs> well, I figured uh, it, has out. it already been paid for? No. Oh, okay. Well, it wasn't my club no. then. And then I just, I, to I told Henry, I was like, well at the very least i just won't schedule anything else on that date and usually the clubs will email me like a few days before with the zoom link and like just a reminder of like hey we're gonna get set up at this time i was like i'll just wait it out and be really stressed until then <laughs> like wondering who the heck i scheduled it with and hoping it wasn't on february 18th or something like that but i'm organizing my calendar getting all my demos lined up and i should have this stuff down by now but i think because i scheduled it like a month or so ago i'm still new to this and i'm still not like i'm still not that type of secretary type person where i can be completely organized in a digital format and i know everything like hour to hour every day of my life it's usually like all right i'm gonna come home i'm gonna make a bunch of hats i'm gonna eat dinner i'm gonna make some more hats and then i'm gonna go to sleep and then i'm gonna wake up i'm gonna go to school and i'm gonna repeat but maybe with bodies <laughs> instead of hats yeah. and it's usually like that and like oh yeah and i have this one demo coming up in two weeks and i know exactly who it's with because i've been planning on it for like three months but now with more requests for demos and doing more demos leads to more demos so i just did one with wood turners 360 i think i talked to you guys since then mm -hmm. i think i talked to you like the day after i did it um since then i've got other requests for more demos none of them for gnomes though because i think we're ending the season for gnomes and now yeah. everybody wants um walking mushrooms pop boxes um some other things that I'm sure I've forgotten. Some clubs just want me on their schedule and they haven't decided what they're going to do yet. So I'm just scheduling more demos, finalizing everything. Um, I did have a couple anxiety attacks over the <laughs> this last week. Um, I'm like having one just listening to everything you've got going on. <laughs> like, yeah, like for real legitimate mental, emotional meltdown freak out could not function aren't those <laughs> um, the absolute worst I, you yeah. just sit there and you're like i need to be working on something but i can't function <laughs> yeah yeah and it, it wasn't good and i ended up taking two days off of work because like i just i couldn't and it wasn't for it what it wasn't a day off even mm -hmm. like the two days that i took off i should have been there like i had a job to do we were starting exams we're doing state testing. Everything is like coming together. But you know how um, some people have testing anxiety? Mm -hmm. Like I have that really mm -hmm. bad. Um, but I also, for whatever reason, have test administration anxiety, <laughs> which is even more heightened because not only is my certificate on the line, but all of the other students' tests are on the line. And what happens if I screw some up, something up? And so... To put it clear, to put it as simply as I think I can, my brain <clears throat> simultaneously goes into overdrive and shuts down, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it just yeah. doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It, so, it's, like, it's like stimulus overload. There's just too much, too, too much coming in and not enough going out, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah, we've got another day like that this week, and I'm not looking forward to it and uh, kind of panicked because of it and... Yeah. Like, because of that, that's all I can think about. And so yeah. now I can't focus on anything else. Is this and your last been... week before Christmas break? Yes. Okay. This is our last week before Christmas break. And the day I'm scheduled to be in a testing room is Thursday. And this is our makeup testing week. So everybody by now should have already taken all of their exams. But if they missed a day and they weren't able to come in and take it, then they'll have to take it this coming week. So we're hoping that not very many kids will come in and maybe the room that I'm assigned to will be dissolved and I'll be able to focus on what <clears throat> I need to in my classroom. So um, along with my anxiety and my stress, um, full disclosure, I'm probably going to start going and seeing a doctor about this because it's <laughs> getting to a point where it's not as manageable as it has been in the past. Yeah. So yay, anxiety. Yay. <laughs> it, sounds like, it sounds like you just need to quit your job and move to Kentucky. Yeah, I mean, you know, 
<laughs> sure would be nice. Maybe I can go live live on an old Amish farm with my brother and there you go. have a grand old time. We, I mean, he has a guest house. It's it's there. It's waiting for us. From what I hear, though, it doesn't have plumbing or internet or water. Yeah, you don't need those things. <laughs> Come yeah. on. You young kids you think know, you got to have all that stuff? You don't need that. Right? Well, I did actually hear about this. Um, it's a new, I don't think it's newly trending, but it's just f- like getting a little bit further out there. It's called Cottage Core. And it's all just about like <clears throat> living off the land and kind of that style of living, the very, very rustic mm-hmm. style of living. And it, Tre- it seems like it's pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll be into cottage core, and then all you need is I'll a treadle well lathe. About. That's what you need is a treadle lathe. Yeah. There, there's a term yeah. for people yeah, like no, that. I think I'll keep the lathes I have. There's a term for people like that. They're called preppers. Preppers. Oh, oh, I didn't. I'm I, a no, prepper. I'm you're a that. prepper. He's a prepper. She's a. Pre- <laughs> Wouldn't you like to be a prepper too? too? <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, one more thing. I think I did actually put it in there. Um, because most of this week is makeup testing and I've finally got mostly caught up on my grades. I'm going to be um, just contacting students pretty much like hour by hour, like trying to get as many students and parents contacted as possible this week to tell them what they're missing and let them know, like, if they don't turn this, this and this in, they're going to fail and they're going to have to retake the class next year. Um, it's not a lot of like hands-on stuff it's just dial my phone call another number and talk to this person so i've prepped a little bit so that i can start sanding at the school um so i've prepped these little these little alien things with these little quills that come off the back and i I prepped them by carving them with my amazing saber tooth carving burrs Mm -hmm. let's just get into this real quick there you go (laughs) <laughs> preach on sister preach on yeah so um i had this really nice walnut i'm not sure what kind of walnut it is but it's got these really gorgeous like black streaks in it and mm-hmm. it's a lot softer than most walnut that i use and so it carves really easily and so i carved these cute little forms and they're kind of a spin-off of some other forms that i've done in the past um, with these little quills that come off the back. I think one of them has five quills and two more have three quills. So um, they're all carved with my uh, saber tooth burrs. Mm-hmm. And now all I have to do is start sanding it because, I mean, the point that I have them carved to, if I just start with an 80 grit or maybe 120 on some of them, I should be able to knock these things mm-hmm. out and actually finish them and have like real products, something mm-hmm. in more my style, not just the gnomes mm-hmm. um and rebecca if, like... if, if someone were wanting to rip off your carvings where would they go to get those saber tooth burrs oh well they would go to sabertooth.com <laughs> and if you want to rip them off for even cheaper you could enter ymt at checkout and save 10 percent off your online order awesome and so... then rip rip me off all and day n- long yeah, and not credit you <laughs> or... see i'm thinking i'm thinking this, this is going to work out really well <laughs> I just wanted to throw that Order. in. I'm sorry. Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> I would recommend ordering the green grit and the yellow grit um, because those are the two that I use primarily to like really hog out a lot of material, especially on the soft walnut. It's really nice. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm all prepped. I'm going to bring those little objects to just sand away and... <laughs> Hopefully get some things done while I'm waiting for people to respond to emails and waiting for people to pick up the phone. So I figured that would be a good thing to do with my hands mm-hmm. while I'm talking and have mm-hmm. them be like, what the heck are you doing while I'm talking to parents on the phone? Like, you know, just saying whatever. <laughs> Hello, Mr. and <laughs> Mrs. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> just want to call you about little Johnny. <laughs> yeah, I can see it now. <laughs> That's going to work out really well, Rebecca. <laughs> it's going to be great gonna be great well i'm the only person that's supposed to be in my own room so nobody's gonna have any weird reactions to the dust nobody's gonna care about all of the mess i'm gonna be making it'll be fine all right all right i love it i love it all that noise you're making though somebody may ask did you have beans today for lunch (laughs) i'm only bringing sandpaper i'm not actually bringing the carver i prepped by carving Ah, things okay okay So well, uh, maybe what you could do is get kind of a beak one. Hey, you know, get kind of rap, rap to the parent. Let's go 
going little, downhill fast. Little, little beatbox. Yeah, little beatbox. Welcome yeah. to the dad joke portion of the show already. Wow. Hey, <laughs> speaking of going downhill, I do want to mention something. Um, and I heard, uh, I was listening to the podcast with uh, David Picciuto and uh, Jimmy Duresta and, and uh, Bob Claggett. And they talked mm-hmm. about Bly Bly or Billy Billy. He, he called it Bly Bly, but I think it's B-I-L-I, B-I-L-I. And Michael, you may even want to check. It is a it is a Chinese YouTube, and the you actually are paid for your videos. There's advertising fees, and you get paid for your videos. Uh, and my entire catalog is out there, and I'm not making anything for it. And I bet yours is too, because somebody over there in China has. And this is where I heard Jimmy had the same problem. They're ripping off the videos and they're posting them, and they're taking all the revenue. So you're making probably additional revenue on. Uh, Lost River Pins. Is this the one where he, he he was saying he he was Jimmy Duresta? No, that's and... another one. That guy posted oh, okay. on actual YouTube. This, this this is if you go to B L I B L I. I'm sorry, B I L I B I L I. Uh, on it's just Google that it'll pop up. It is it is literally looks just like YouTube, but it's all in Chinese. Huh? What? Yeah. So if if you post videos and. <laughs> Somebody, you're getting ripped off. I don't know. We'll never, we'll never see the revenue for that. But uh, no, well, yeah. especially since it's probably in China. I just, yeah, it is. I, and I just thought I would mention that. And I know it's a tangent, but uh, that's interesting, isn't yeah. it? Che- I just wanted you crazy. to check your videos. Hey, tangent, tangent. That's cool. <laughs> no, but it's it's interesting. Yeah. That's so, nice. Rebecca, I was going to tell you, as a fellow sufferer of anxiety, going to the doctor is. A great idea. There are great medicines out there that help with it. So my, don't my be afraid concern, to ask for them. My concern with with medicating is that it's going to change me to the point where I don't like myself. You know, <clears throat> like I'm I'm worried that it's going to alter my personality or my drive because like I've got I've got a ridiculous drive to create and to keep creating, and I know that some medications kind of like damper that Mm -hmm. and i don't Mm. want it to do that and i think just i don't know and and i don't know where to start because we don't have like a regular family doctor here that we go to like if this if there's something wrong we go to a specialist that deals with that thing and we don't do like the regular every so often checkups Mm -hmm. with the same person so i don't even know where to start honestly well, the the meds, some of the meds that are available are for acute symptoms. So if you, it's nothing that you have to be on on a daily basis. It's, it's if like you get to one of those, thing. yeah. If it's if you have one of those days where you just absolutely cannot function, you take one of them, and about an hour later, you're in a much better place. That seems like I'm that I might need one something like that. <laughs> And of course, this, not uh, every this, day. this show is just for informational and uh, entertainment purposes only. Any medical <laughs> advice given on this show should not be taken seriously. Except by me. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, it's it's something... <sighs> Anxiety is a mental illness, and it's not something to be taken lightly. And it's something that I I shame on me for not doing anything about it until now because it causes me a lot of like subsequent issues and like my entire life as far as back as I can remember I've had anxiety issues and I've never done Mm -hmm. anything about it Mm -hmm. other than just finding ways to distract me from my stress which is why I probably have so many things going (laughs) on all the time (laughs) which which in turn just builds more stress so right Mm -hmm. (laughs) a little bit so i don't know it's a vicious cycle Mm. yeah it's it's not something i'm like hiding behind and it's not something i i'll talk to anybody about it like i go through a lot of just junk in my head and maybe that's why i make the weird stuff that i do but i don't know yeah i i agree with you you know you definitely want to see someone but that is the main concern you want to bring up is you don't want anything to stunt your creativity because that is that is the real Rebecca and that's the Rebecca that you want to continue to to grow and develop. So I I agree with Michael. See somebody, but uh, make sure you discuss deeply with them what the, any medication that they might prescribe will do to you. you know, yeah. None of us want to see see that happen, right? Yeah. 
Okay, then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I bought a new tool this week. What'd, What'd you buy? get? I'm not telling anybody. What? You're such a tool. Well, that's not fair. <laughs> well, well, you know, Rebecca, if I tell people, then somebody might already have one or somebody else might go out and buy one. And just like the gnomes, you had the video and you sat on it and Nick Zamet beat you to the punch. Somebody <laughs> might beat me to the punch. So <laughs> I, bought, I, bought this, I bought this new tool. I, I want to try something different. I've got an idea. I've, I've, I've been inspired. I want to try something new in the shop, which could relate to what I already do. But it's just something that's that's caught my interest, and I've been watching a lot of videos on it. And the nice thing is, it is extremely inexpensive to do, um, to the tune of about fifteen dollars. So, um, I'm anxious to get the tool. It should be in Monday or Tuesday, and I want to play with play with it a little bit, you know, in the shop. And uh, hopefully, this is the inspiration I need to just get my butt back out there. Um, it's good that I found something I want to do, and like I said, it can play back into pen turning. So, that's pretty cool. A fifteen dollar right. tool. Well, you can buy really expensive ones, <laughs> but I didn't want to spend the money. I want to try first, and knowing that mm -hmm. I may have more difficulty because it's less expensive, and if I really enjoy it, then I will sink the money into buying. Sixty bucks is about the average of a good one. It's a hand so tool. Hearing, it's a hand tool. I'm hearing he went to Harbor Freight. No, I did. I did eBay. No. Worse than Harbor Freight. I eBay. went eBay. <laughs> If if we guess it, are you going to tell us? I don't know. I might. Does it have to do with color? No. Does it have uh, to do with texture? No. Ooh. I'm counting because like, we're playing 20 questions here, right? <laughs> Does it have to do with shaping? Well, not not really. It's it's not really. It's not like a grinder or a bit. Like like a, it's not like a saber tooth bit. Is it a woodworking tool? Yes. <laughs> the, the, people are like, oh, "Good God, this is boring." Just move on to the next segment. <laughs> do I'm gonna? We'll wait for the video. <laughs> do you move the tool over the wood, or move the wood over the tool? Yes. <laughs> okay i'm done with my guesses i'll, I'll come back with some more later oh, it's, just, it's just something fun that it, it, it's something fun that I, I don't want to spoil it because i finally okay. have something i'm interested in doing and i want to be i want to try this so and it's been a long time since i've wanted to be in the shop so okay. uh, i'm i'm fairly happy with it so we'll see how it goes okay not gonna spoil it and no it's more nothing questions. super nothing super fancy trust me okay yeah <laughs> well i'm excited you found your motivation I found some motivation. We'll see how far it okay. takes me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll see how far it takes me. Well, That's since we're good. talking about tools, yeah, mm -hmm. we had a listener send in a couple of questions this week, so and specifically about tools. <clears throat> so we could probably talk about his issues mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. maybe stumble upon what what Bob has purchased. I I doubt it, but <laughs> um, I already got one of those, Rob. Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Elbert sent in, and his first question is, he has a scroll saw that he bought used and thinking that he could incorporate it into pen making and wants to know, is there any real viable way to use it for pen making? And Bob, I know that you have a scroll saw that mm -hmm. you use quite mm -hmm. a bit, so you might want to pipe in on this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, haven't, I haven't used mine recently, but if you look back in my catalog... I used my scroll saw to make a lot of blanks. Uh, one style blank that I was making that was really, really popular was um, I would take um, two blanks and I would tape them together, one on top of the other, and I would run them through the scroll saw, just kind of wiggling back and forth, making like a sine wave almost. And I would separate the two pieces, and then one would be maybe walnut, one would be maybe maple. And I would rotate them, so now I had a blank that was half walnut, half maple. Then I would flip them 90 degrees, restack them and cut them again potentially with two other blanks because I, I would put sometimes four pieces of wood on there but I could make some really cool looking blanks that way um, I also did the squiggly cut and glued aluminum can between my two pieces of wood and turned that to give some really nice effects you can get really really creative with a scroll saw uh, you can do some really cool stuff is it a staple of 
Pin blank making? No, no. It's not something I would buy specifically for that, but if you got one and you got it for a great price and it's already in your shop, why not try it? You know, like I said, I've got several videos out there. And the, the only other thing I could think of is if you did something like rotoscoping, uh, where you would maybe cut out the profile of something inside a blank mm -hmm. and then backfill it with a resin so that that shape shows mm -hmm. up once you turn it around. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. You could do that. Um, I, I often thought, one, one thing I thought of, and I'm going to throw this idea out there because I've never done it, but years ago you would go to, oh, let's say Holiday World or Kings Island or any of the theme parks, and they always had a little woodworking booth there where they would cut your name out. And I'm thinking they, I don't remember if they were using a bandsaw or a scroll saw, but they would cut your name out and put a little island in it and make a keychain. And my thought was if you took a block of wood that was the length of a tube, you can go ahead and drill it if you want, but you could cut like your name out, you know, and, <laughs> and actually, you know, you could do something, experiment that way. I mean, I've never done it, but I've thought about it many times. It'd be kind of a cool experiment. That would be cool. Yeah. You could cut out your name. Mm-hmm. And then have your name cast resin around it. Yep. yep. Ooh, you could do two of them. You could do your name and your wife's name. Yeah. And do one on either side so that then your name isn't just backwards on the other side. You can have them next yeah. to each other. Or your children's names. Mm -hmm. <gasps> or your pet's names. See, there's you all have kinds of names options. wrapped all the way around it and just kind of wrap <laughs> it all the way around the tube. And as long as they're fit to the tube nicely and your resin actually goes into all of the little crevices and that is all a that. fantastic idea. The only thing you've got to watch for, and this has bit me in the behind a couple times, is uh -huh. if you make it, it's going to skew when you turn it. And if yeah, you if have you multiple it, names, oh, go ahead. If you make it only as tall. You would just have to make it really short mm -hmm. so that it doesn't wrap all the way around or like bleed off the sides, basically. Mm -hmm. You just have to make them really narrow, small, probably a pro probably smaller than the barrel is wide. You'd have to be mm -hmm. a pretty good scroll solar for that. Yeah. yeah. Now, the other thing is yeah. you, you, you could <laughs> yeah. do, I've seen a lot of people make it and not his one of his concerns and michael you haven't read this point yet i'll wait till you get to the to the next point i'm no, sorry go ahead go ahead well one of his points was he's only seen people doing flat work on a scroll saw you can do three dimensional work if you look up mm -hmm. scroll saw reindeer or scroll saw ornaments there are people who will take a block of wood and they'll make the cuts on it and the piece the, the slab comes off and they'll glue the slab back on and they'll reflip it over and make cuts from another angle and they'll do this the pattern that you can get will let you do it from multiple angles and when you're done you peel all those pieces off and you have a three-dimensional reindeer or a three-dimensional ornament there are some really really cool 3d things that you can do and you can even make bowls uh, yes you can scroll yes saw. you can um scroll saw there's a magazine it's called uh, I, I don't get it anymore it's uh, scroll saw woodworking and craft magazine i think it is and um it's a monthly publication or bi-monthly publication, and they've always got fantastic stuff in there for scroll sawers. So, uh, and, and as a matter of fact, um, I saw some advertisement for this, this month's issue or this current issue, and they literally have some pins in there that look identical to the ones I did with the squiggly cut where they cut them apart and then made the blanks. So I'm, it, it, I don't know that it, it doesn't mention me, but I'm hoping that that's where the inspiration for them came from. So... You know, you've got that video. You know the date. It's copyrighted. Yes, I know, but <laughs> I know, but I'm not. I'm not that way. I'm, you know. Yeah. If I put it out there, it's kind of like, well, I was, you know, I put it out there. If I want to, if it, I want to keep it for myself, I won't put it out there. Yeah. Now I, I also. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Just speaking on that topic, I I was in my demo or in my uh, one of my club meetings this weekend. It's the same club that I had issues with last month. And this is like strike number two. They were so rude to just everybody who wanted to share this this month. But 
One of the things that I, I was, I had my video off. I wasn't really chiming in much because I was just chilling in the house, working on some stuff, keeping myself busy as usual, just listening to everything that was going on. And they're like, well, Rebecca, have you been doing anything this month? I was like, you know, just a bunch of gnomes. Not not too excited about it just because I'm still a little upset at them. And <laughs> they're like, well, we can't see you and we can't see your gnomes. I was like, fine. So I turn my camera on. I show them my gnomes. And while a couple people are like quiet in the background, like, oh, those are so cool. Yeah, I've seen a lot of those lately. And I'm like, yeah, it's really cool, you know, like starting this trend. One guy chimes in, well, this guy made those about four years ago. You're just ripping him off. Wow. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> like, who is this person? And I asked a couple times, I was like, okay, spell his name. What is it? Because I want to look him up. I want to see if there was actually yeah. <clears throat> this style gnome made before I started. And so I find out who it is. I go to his Facebook after doing a couple Google searches. We're not friends on Facebook, but I dive into his pictures. He has pictures all the way back like six years ago. And there is only one picture of gnomes made about a month after I started posting mine. Oh. Again, and I'm like, wait a second. Oh. So I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. But it, I talked to another one of the members who was just torn a new one for mentioning something about his tool use and like something that he had done and something that had happened due to what he had done and they're like well you can't do that and that's a terrible method and blah 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 and all this stuff and attack 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 and other people were chiming in they're like yeah that's wrong and that's not right and you can't do it like that and you can only do it like this and i'm like okay calm down it sounds like like we found a, a pocket of trolls that might be a trolling club I think it is. Ooh, honestly, wow. I think it I think it is. So, um I ended up talking to the guy after the fact. I was like, I'm 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 about done with this club. And I'm sorry, this is another tangent, but it's just one of those one of those things where I think this social isolation is getting to people. Yeah. Yeah. And either the tension is just running really high or the fact that they're seeing everybody through a computer screen is lowering their filter <laughs> and mm-hmm. <laughs> they just don't have it anymore because they're just being total jerks and i've never experienced that in a club meeting before not like this and it just seems to be getting worse and worse every month okay sorry i'm done it was just about that whole mm-hmm. somebody meet i was i was said to have ripped off my wow. gnome design you know Again. I, I, I and I'm, I'm going to stay on Rebecca's tangent for a moment. I, I always hate to hear the ripped off comment. Like if Rebecca did a gnome and tomorrow I do a gnome, maybe I ripped her off. But everything's been done before in one form yeah. or another. Okay, woodworking is just a building a bunch of boxes, right? And it's the same mm-hmm. thing. So I'm so tired of hearing ripped off. I mean, if you're jealous because I can make a gnome and you can't, then tell me I ripped it. I, you know, I ripped off somebody, right? That that's. That's the way I look at it. But guess what? That was last week's episode, so I'm going to move on, too, because Michael's yeah. about to fall asleep back there. Okay, scroll stop. Flat stuff. Gnomes. Uh, gnomes. <laughs> you know, and, and the other thing, if, if you scroll saw is an incredible tool. I started with the scroll saw before I started with a lathe. Look up mm-hmm. Intarsia. Look up Mosaic. Oh, yeah. Look up, look up, like I said, 3D ornaments. Michael talked about bowls. Um, There are so many things you can do with a scroll saw and you can use small scraps of wood just like you can in turning, you know, for small bins or whatever. Don't just think about, can I use this for pin turning? Look at some of the other options because a scroll saw is such an awesome tool. You can do so much with them. They're very versatile. Okay. I I demoed a new style of gnome hat on my demo last week. Mm Mm-hmm. And if you start seeing this new style of gnome hat, it's just yours. know that it's mine, as far as I know. Oh, <laughs> I, like, I like it. I like it. Yeah. Nice. So I'll, I'll show it off soon. Wow. You know, people, yeah, we saw it first. That's going to yeah. be the challenge. People are, that's going to be the challenge. Don't it show, is. don't demo how to do that. 
I already did. Make them figure out how to do it themselves. <laughs> you already did. See? I already did. But it, it's to my group over in the UK. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if they start showing up overseas, <laughs> cool. It's, that, is, that is really neat. <laughs> People are going to love seeing that when it comes out because it's really going to add a whole new dimension. I hope homes. so. It's going to add another price bracket. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they're going to be okay, my $100 I like, gnomes. I like 85 and 95 How much are those? <laughs> okay, are we, are we all gnomed out? We're gnomed out. Oh, we I'm gnomed, gnomed out. out. Okay. we got lots I'm to ready. talk about. Okay, Michael, what else was part we're, of this question there? We're, we're getting gnome numb. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nom nums. They said that sounds like a cookie. Nom nums. Nom nums. Uh so his <laughs> the second portion of his question is <laughs> That sounds like something I might call Michael a nom num. <laughs> I make he's losing it. I'm sorry, it got, I just got my funny bone tickled there. <laughs> I know. See, now's the time to just keep striking. See, when the iron is hot, then you just keep hitting the guy when he's down, right? So he can't, he can't stop. He can't quit breathing. He's like <gasps> gasping for air. That's when, that's when you just got to attack. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he says the, the bigger question would be what tools would be most useful in an extremely small shop, primarily focused on small spindle turning. And he adds, I think I may have might beat on shop size. My shop is limited to a cellar basement corner. Ceiling mm -hmm. height is about six and a half feet. Floor space is right at eight by ten feet. That's a tight spot. So, How that's tall cozy. is this guy? Does he have to duck to get in the room? <laughs> he I don't could know. Be I, a gnome. I, I, he didn't give us his height. Oh my gosh! I well, would say. Well, does he have a lathe already? I would assume so. Since he's already okay. in a, a pen hobby. So he's already turning. Mm -hmm. um, I would suggest a drill press. I a don't know. No? You well, drill on the lathe. I mean, if you, if, yeah, I if you're trying to consolidate space, yeah. then, then I would suggest I would a good set lathe. of drill bits. <laughs> a really okay. good oh, quality yeah. set. Really good Jacobs type chucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, bandsaw, small bandsaw. But I guess if he's using a scroll saw, but I prefer the bandsaw. It's too hard to get a straight cut on the scroll saw. You know, you say that in the beginning, it certainly is. But when you get adept at using the saw, you can you can put a pretty straight cut on something. But but I do think it's easier on a bandsaw. Mm. And mm -hmm. plus, you can build some really nice sleds for a bandsaw mm -hmm. to be able to do some really good mm -hmm. trick stuff. So a bands, yeah. I think a small bandsaw is is. Uh, a good idea like one of those well, like the one you've got the countertop type yes exactly not the floor stand type. yeah you yeah. don't need a floor stand and but when you buy one do a little research because i had god wasn't a ryobi uh maybe it was a ryobi i had one of those cheap ones okay they're they're when they're cheap they're literally garbage spend mm -hmm. a little bit of money and get a decent brand because it makes, I moved from that to the Craftsman. I think it's a 101 or something, 110, 120, I don't know, some, whatever the Craftsman number is. And it was, it's a world of difference, and it's not even a top-of-the-line saw. It's, it's not like a, one of the small Lagunas or one of the small Rikons or something. But uh, it, it, it makes a world of difference if you have a better saw and invest in good blades. Don't use the cheap mm -hmm. blades because they, they mm -hmm. wear out quick. It gets you a good blade. It'll cut straighter. Yeah. And if that's something you have to save up for, invest in a little razor saw and one of those aluminum miter blocks. Uh, if, if all you're cutting mm -hmm. is pen blanks, a razor saw will go through oh, one yeah. of those and nothing flat. Oh, yeah. I've, I've got one of those, one of those miter, uh, miter saws. Um, mm -hmm. Jorgensen, I think, is the name of mine. I don't know what they cost. They're not expensive. And I used that thing for years. They're great. Well, yours is like the whole big handheld miter saw one, right? Yeah, it's all one piece. Like for, for yeah. large what I'm talking about is one of those little razor saws. It's maybe about six <clears throat> inches long. Okay. And one of the handled, just, you know, mm -hmm. and there's a, an aluminum channel, basically, that's about an inch and a half yeah. wide that has two 45s and a straight cut mm -hmm. uh, milled into it. Okay, and you I know what you're talking about. Align it up with the, with your razor saw that way. You know what? L let's let's take this topic. Let's pause for a second because we're given some great information, but we're all over the place. We've gone from drilling to cutting to. Let's stop and go back to the beginning. Blank preparation. 
you've got your bandsaw, you've got a good blade. If you don't, if you want to save a little money, Michael talking about the razor saw. Okay. So anything else you could think of in association with prepping the blank to size? Not yet. Okay. Mm -mm. Uh, there, there's going to be other size prepping, but it comes later. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you can make all kinds of jigs for cutting to size and things like that. Mm -hmm. Next up would be getting the hole in the blank. And we've talked a little bit about a decent Jacob's Chuck. Um, and and a, a, a note for you, I don't like the ones with the key. I like the ones you can hand tighten. I don't know, maybe you guys prefer the one with the key, but those are so much quicker to put the the um, the um, bits in and get them in and out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another nice thing to think of is you can also use those for holding taps. You can put that into your tailstock and hold a tap to be able to tap something. So it's a very versatile tool to have a good Jacob's Chuck. Invest along, in a good set of... Oh, go ahead, Michael. Along with that, to drill your holes, you're mm -hmm. going to need a chuck to hold the blank. Mm-hmm. So you're either going to need like a Nova Comet type chuck mm -hmm. or there are specialty ch chucks out there just for holding pent blanks and drilling. Now, so I, you're I, in the, oh, you're I in the cost range of one to three hundred dollars, depending on how much you want to drop there. I have both. Uh, buy a mm -hmm. chuck. When you buy a chuck, make sure it's one that you can buy multiple styles of jaw for so that you can change your jaw. OK, I highly I, I prefer a standard chuck as opposed to the pin jaws. Because with a standard chuck, you can take any size wood just about, you know, by putting a tenon on it. With the pin jaws, you're limited to smaller stock. You know, I'm not saying he's gonna to wanna to cut a huge piece of wood, but let's say he wanted to make a vase, vase, however you say it, tomato, tomato. You know, he could put his wood between centers, cut his tenon, and then hold it in this. So buy a tool, when you buy a tool, Try to buy a tool that offers more than one use. So mm -hmm. that's why I say standard jaws. Okay? Um, mm -hmm. And that's just me. You guys may feel different, but I'm just trying to say with a limited space, if I can do two or more things with a tool, that's the tool I want to approach. Mm -hmm. Right. Invest and, in it. Oh, go ahead, Becca. Well, I, I was going to say, I know he is, he's all about safe or um, saving space right now, but... yes. How many turners do you know that only have one chuck? That that's Me. true. Really? Yeah. I only have. Do you, well, do you yeah, typically yeah, only use one set of jaws, though? I have pen holding jaws, and then the jaws that came with it. I I haven't had a need to get anything bigger yet. <clears throat> okay, cause see, but because I have the I option go... to. Yeah, and because I switch between so many different sizes depending on what I'm making, it's usually between the standard size, like the two-ish inch size mm -hmm. and the pin jaws. Um, <clears throat> it's exhausting trying to switch them out every time. So I just have two chucks sitting there, one set up with one set mm -hmm. of jaws and the other one set up with the other side set of jaws, and I never have to worry about switching. Yeah. Although, if he wants ease of switching back and forth, the easy wood tool, the easy chuck, that one is super, super easy, and Those it only takes nice. like... We got it, um, Heath Knuckles got it down to 12.9 seconds to switch one set to another <laughs> set. <laughs> we, we, we had a, ch a jaw switching competition at um, AAW a couple years ago. I think it was the one in Portland where we were all set up in Carl Jacobson's um, mobile maker thing, mobile turning thing. And it, we were just having a blast and like the timers were going and the mm -hmm. pressure was high mm -hmm. and I had like 15.3 seconds and he had me just, just by a couple yeah. seconds, but I wasn't even a runner up. It was, it was heated. But um, <laughs> anyways, the easy chuck, you can, you can swap those jaws out super yep. fast, super easy. So I keep that chuck on the lathe outside because mm -hmm. I know I don't want to bring all of my different chucks out there. So I just keep the one out there yeah. and I keep the other two in here. Yeah. That Hearing that story wondering. now just wants me to work that much harder to get Heath on the show. Yeah. yeah we <laughs> we need to get, get him on here. here. He's a cool guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My well, brother okay. actually sent me a video of one of his pieces. I was like, I know him. He's like, no, you don't. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, so we've got cutting, drilling. And don't mm -hmm. forget the bits. I am going to make a comment, Michael. You may feel the same way. I don't use bits from Sears or from Home Depot or Lowe's. I literally mm -hmm. go, I buy a quality bit 
and you're going to spend a little bit more, but they last forever and you get a much more precise cut. And by a quality bit, I, I've bought them from Woodcraft. I've bought them from Craft Supply. I'm buying bits that are designed to drill blanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're paying between like probably 10 and $20 per bit, probably? Unfortunately, I am, but I've only ever bought them once and I can't tell you how many pins I have turned hundreds mm -hmm. upon hundreds of pins and you take care of them when you're done you put them back in the sleeve you know don't mm -hmm. just throw them in a box and let them get all beat up it is worth having quality bits mm -hmm. and that's 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 just my my opinion but so at that point we're done drilling okay mm -hmm. uh at, at that point we move on to getting the tubes glued into the pin i prefer epoxy michael uh, epoxy. Epoxy. Okay. I, I've moved away from CA. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're looking at about 25 bucks for some decent epoxy, some decent Loctite epoxy, but it lasts a long, long time. Um, you've got your I'm, tube glued in. Oh, go ahead, Rebecca. Did I'm, I'm rereading his a question. Bit? He's not just asking about pens. Mm -hmm. I'm realizing he's talking um, small spindle turning too. Okay. So it's not mm -hmm. just pens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the well, chuck so, could really come into play on that as well yeah exactly mm -hmm. it's kind of like the multi-use thing so that would work and, and the drill bits as well bob can you move up your microphone just a little bit yeah there we go that better you're getting really quiet okay, okay. game on so let's see well, we've got the bits the chuck uh sanding sand a... oh, oh, uh, oh. if you're if you're pin turning getting it to length right Mm -hmm. So, but not necessarily for other small turnings, like Rebecca mentioned. How do you prefer that, Michael? I do mine on the lathe. On the lathe with a disc. I've got a, uh, I've got a wooden disc that I made mm -hmm. that's on permanently attached to a faceplate, mm -hmm. so it's always centered. I've got, uh, well, depending on the day, I either have sixty or eighty grit sandpaper mm -hmm. on there, mm -hmm. and I have a uh, a jig that fits into the Jacobs chuck mm -hmm. that's offset from center. Mm -hmm. And I just put a, a punch out in that jig mm -hmm. and put the blank onto it, move the tailstock forward, and sand the end of the blank. Mm -hmm. And you could Would also... Would you be willing to post oh. a picture of that jig on our Instagram? Sure. Or is it a secret jig? No, no. I, I, as a matter of fact, I, you know, I bought it off of somebody that makes them, mm -hmm. uh, bought it off of Facebook. If I can find that guy again, I'll, I'll get a... A link to his, yeah, his shop. I think okay. that's. And this, I, go ahead, Rebecca. Sorry, this does the job of the reaming tool, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't do the reaming. It but does it, the. It does the ends. The barrel trimming. Okay, because I always end up exploding my blanks um, with the dumb reamer. Well, see, th this is where what Michael has. Basically, you just need to square the blank with the tube, right? So you're going to mm -hmm. get a nice mm -hmm. fit with your component. I use a disc sander, but not everybody has one of those. And in a small shop, you may not have room for it or funds for it. What he's using will do the same thing. But I wanted to make a mention. He made a disc for his his uh, lathe. You can actually mm -hmm. buy those sanding discs those that you use on drills. And you could put those in your Jacob's chuck that you bought and then use the tool that Michael has. See, So you don't have to worry about making if you don't have the tools to make a, a larger circle or whatever. Or you know you just I guess you could do that on your lathe, but if you yeah, if you didn't want to go to that did. if you didn't want to go to that trouble, you can pick those flat for the drill for your uh, dr your hand drill. You can pick those mm -hmm. flat ones mm -hmm. up pretty pretty reasonable. They're only a couple of bucks. Just trying to save money and get the guy going quicker, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then once your blank is squared, it's time to turn. So Michael, this is this is the argument. Do we go TBC? Do we go? Uh, mandrel, mandrel saver. Where, where do you go? Where, where do you where are you at here? That's user preference. I agree, one hundred percent. But I think I think we mentioned them all just a tiny bit. If you well, there are, are there are turn between center mandrels mm -hmm. uh, where they have basically you have a live center and I guess you'd call it a dead one. Mm -hmm. Um, that have posts that come off of each of them that mm -hmm. your bushings can fit on, mm -hmm. but they're not connected in the center. So it technically turned between center, even though it's not, because it doesn't come down to the 60-degree angle. 
Yeah. Uh, I, th- I think those I are kind of hit or miss when I, from what I hear. Yeah. I, the pair that I have work great. Uh, other people have complained that theirs have fallen apart. Mm-hmm. The, the live center portion of it has. You know, you can buy those or you can buy special turn between center bushings. I think you're wasting your money. Um, I would buy a 60 degree dead center for the headstock. I'd buy a nice 60 degree live center for the tailstock. And I just use the standard pin turning bushings and everything except slimline will fit between that dead and live center and turn just like a turn between center. I don't waste the money on buying those. I just go straight to a standard bushing. Hmm. Have never had a problem. I can't tell you how many hundreds of pins I've made that way. So definitely a good dead center, definitely a good live center or a must. And they're both handy, even if you're just using or just doing normal spindle turning, turning a mm-hmm. wand or whatever, getting getting a blank trued up. You could use those. And by dead center on this one, we're talking about is one that's cut just to the 60 degrees. Well, it doesn't have the it prongs. It doesn't have the prongs. That, Correct. Right. Correct. Yes. And that, that's what drives it. That's in the headstock, so that drives it. Mm-hmm. You, know, you tighten it down. Uh, I do not have um, – I have turn between center bushings that I've been given over the years to try, um, but I, I wouldn't bother buying them. Just use, what you, just use what you can get the most conveniently and the most reasonably. They work great. And people will argue with you on that, but guess what? It works like a champ. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, While you're turning – Good tools. Rebecca has been so quiet this show. Well, I, we're, we're dominating. Rebecca? <laughs> I you, know. You guys are talking about pens. <laughs> 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 yes, I have turned pens yeah. before. <laughs> well, here's one where you could really, really probably uh, add a lot to this conversation. What tools would you recommend a beginning turner have in their arsenal, whether it's pen turning or whether it is um, spindle turning? Mm. Well, let's Wait. just go with spindle turning Okay. Yeah. This well, one. I mean, okay. We've we've talked the pens to death. Let's talk about are, spindle turning in general. Are they putting a lot of form into their spindles, or are they keeping it pretty simple? That's that's the question. I think a lot of let's say a lot of form. Let's assume they're going to want to do some fancy work eventually, because you know, Christmas ornaments. Exactly, Christmas ornaments. Let, 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 let's assume he wants to do some fancy stuff. <laughs> okay, so there are three tools if it's spindle turning that I would recommend. And none of them are the skew. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> oh, 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 man. Ouch. Maybe maybe Ouch. once I'm more comfortable with a skew, I'll start recommending it to people after they learn. But, like, I'm not going to recommend that any new turner or, like, even intermediate turner just go off and start playing with a skew. Like, get your basics down first. And, and honestly, I'm not either. I, I'm, I'm not going to recommend a new turner go to high-speed steel because of the sharpening issue. I'm going to probably direct a new turner toward easy wood. I, oh, I, I know, would, as much I as I did dislike say, them. I would still say um, high-speed steel, but there are three main tools and like basic techniques that you can use to really, really find these three tools manageable. But the first one is a spindle roughing gouge good mm-hmm. size doesn't have to be expensive like i don't even know what brand mine is what would what you say is a good it? size three quarter inch three one quarter. inch i like three quarter this is, this is a one one and a quarter one are we measuring the outer di- the outer dimension it's one inch i have a one inch roughing gouge mm-hmm. it's this brand and half of the brand is gone <laughs> it's <laughs> looks like Something record power. An, it doesn't say power, though. That's the thing. Maybe it does. I don't know. It's record something with more letters than there would be power. That part's rubbed off. Um, so it's it's cheap. I actually got it f- from Tim Wadley. He gave it to me at an AAW because he found out that I didn't have a roughing, a spindle roughing gouge, which he's like, how have you gone this long without a spindle roughing gouge? <laughs> I don't know. I just used my like spindle gouge. And had a really hard time. It was ridiculous. Like the amount of time I used just roughing my spindles with a regular like half inch spindle gouge. I'm like, this has got to stop. And I did that for demos too. They're like, why don't you have that? I was like, because this works, but it doesn't work anywhere near as well. So spindle roughing gouge, a regular spindle gouge. Mm -hmm. And I really, really like a spindle detail gouge. And it's really just a spindle gouge and it's a smaller diameter on it and it's sharpened to a much, much 
Mm-hmm. Hi- higher degree or lower degree? Sharper point. Is that point. the one, is that, the one that I called the fingernail of death? Yes. Okay. That's, that's this one. Yeah, you get poked by that tool, you're going to die. My pointy pointy tool. <laughs> and I have no idea what angle it is, but it's sharp. It's very, very pointy. And it's mm-hmm. what I use for like any of those real sharp detail mm-hmm. cuts, like the really, really sh- um, narrow V cuts that I mm-hmm. make. But it, it's great. It's yeah. amazing. And the cuts are so clean and now, wonderful because you're really just yeah. taking the surface of the material and paring it off. You're not taking a giant amount of material out. Devil's advocate here. I'm a new yeah. turner. And you, Rebecca just re- re- recommended three tools to me, which I agree those are three three tools that should be in anyone's arsenal. You just mm-hmm. recommended those to me in high-speed steel. And I've got a small shop and not a lot of money. How do How do you sharpen them? Uh, I mean, do you do a card file, hundred grit sandpaper. I mean, you can you can hone them for a little while with the card file, but that's yeah. not going to do for very long. Okay. I I would invest in a hundred dollar slow speed grinder from yeah. Woodcraft or Rockler. That's where I got mine. Mm-hmm. I haven't switched out the wheels yet. I've still got the original yeah. stone wheels. I really want to upgrade to the CBN wheel, which is going to be yeah. each wheel is like the price of a new grinder or more, depending <laughs> on what more. wheel you get. Um, yeah. <laughs> They're worth it, though. They are so worth it. That's what I hear. Yeah. And you know what? My tools have never been sharpened yeah. on a CBN wheel. I don't. Yeah. As like, they're always just sharpened on the stone wheel. And then if I need to do a quick hone, I'll take a card, a little diamond card, and just yeah sharpen it up with that, just to extend the life of it a little bit. But then I'll go back mm-hmm. to the grinder again. Yeah. I, I'm the I'm the same way. I've got I've got the I think it's a Rikon uh, 1700 grinder, 750 speed RPM grinder. I do use the CBN wheels, and after I hit it on the CBN, which it's 200 grit, I go to 1,000 grit, I think it is, or 800 grit, and then 1,200 grit uh, card files, and I hone it, and then I take mm-hmm. it to my drill press, and I've got a a strop in my drill press, and I strop it, and you can literally rub it up your arm, and it will take the hair off your arm, just, just barely, just barely touching. The thing is razor sharp, but, but it's 100 bucks for the grinder. It's 200 bucks for the jigs for the grinder. It's 200 something bucks for the CBN wheel. You know, it, it, it's it, so it gets really expensive quick. So I've been more prone, mm-hmm. even though I'm not a fan to 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 send new turners toward the easy wood to start with, you know, and, and, and say th- this will get you started. And then maybe you sell a few, make a few bucks and look into some high speed steel. Mm-hmm. So I, and, I, I, I mean, yeah, the easy wood tools are great. Yeah. Um, if you're going to get started with them, I would actually honestly recommend a roughing a roughing gouge, the one that just has the square cutter. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would honestly recommend swapping out the finisher for the Easy Hollower number one, because they'll mm-hmm. do the same thing. <clears throat> and then the Easy Hollower will be way more versatile in the future, and then get the micro detailer. Yes. So um, the roughing gouge the the one with the square tip that'll get you <clears throat> really quickly down to round mm-hmm. and then any of the final shaping that you might want to do you can do with the easy hollower number one mm-hmm. some people use the the first round one which is the finisher now i'm forgetting the names of what they are <laughs> there's the rougher the finisher and the detailer right. um and i have like multiple sets of each for teaching carbide and all that um but i found that i've just ended up replacing the finisher with the hollower Mm because it's just another round cutter tool and it's really nice because you can do exterior shapes and you can do interior so you can hollow out a lot of small forms and larger forms now i had a guy i had a guy ask me the other day this is along the same lines in regard to tools he has high speed tools that he's using for pin turning and he bought a set of tools that are definitely they're pin tools or the smaller tools. They're maybe 12 inches mm-hmm. long. And he's like, why are you using full length tools? My recommendation would be to purchase full length tools because if you want to move up from pin turning to spindle turning, you're going to want that larger tool to plant in your hip and be able to get a good, uh, a good solid hold on, you know, and, and work mm-hmm. properly with. So I don't recommend anyone buy, even when you're buying the easy wood, buy the longer length handles because I think you're going to get more, once again, more than one use. You can go from pin turning to spindle turning. 
and you're going to be able to be more versatile with them. So just thought I would throw that out too. I'm always looking for multi-use in my tools. Yeah. And I mean, you don't need to go for the professional size ones that are as no, long as they could no, possibly be. No. You can go for the midsize. Midsize is perfect. Like, yeah. Michael's holding up a sign that says time. I think he's trying to tell us that uh, we are talking too long on this subject. But you know what? We don't care. <laughs> Rebecca, what do you have to care. say about that? <laughs> okay. So so we've got tools. Oh, <laughs> Michael just told me I'm number one. Thank you, Michael. I've always known I've been number one in your book. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but anyway, okay, so we've gone through tools. That was fun. Um, sanding and finishing is your preference. There's no sense in us getting into sanding and finishing. Um, let's talk about if you're doing pins real quick, a press. You don't need a press. You could buy some HDPE, turn a couple of little nubbins for your, for your, your uh, lathe. I did it in a video, and you can press your pins together with the lathe or a hand clamp. Uh, but the, the press is nice to have if you're doing pins. Uh, beyond mm-hmm. that, that pretty well sums it up for the tools you need. So, Michael, if you want to take much the show easier than the, than the It's way easier grip. because the micro adjustments as you turn the crank on the tailstock, mm-hmm. you can really kind of micro adjust. It, it's much better. Um, and it, it you can do it for nothing. I mean, a little bit of nothing. So, yeah. just, yeah. But anyway, that's that's where we're at on that. So I hope that answers your question. And if not, Hopefully. I'm sure it'll show up in a tangent one night. Yeah, and, and who cares if we have a two hour <laughs> a two hour show, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, all the other podcasts are taking a break around this time, anyways. That's right. No. Yeah. Oh, speaking of podcasts, can we talk about Ooh. what we've been watching and listening to? I found a new one. Michael, Go hold ahead. that hold that time sign back up. <laughs> 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 okay so i think last week i mentioned that i was watching ink master so good watched the first two seasons now there's no more on netflix and i have nothing to watch unless i pay more money to go somewhere else then i watched the fourth season of big mouth and i'm like did i watch the third season yes i did that's a terrible show but it's hilarious and it talks about young kids <laughs> going through puberty but it's real real good but very vulgar so if you've got young children i don't recommend it <laughs> um i watched a few more episodes of the great british baking show to calm me down on the days that i was working on grades started watching forged in fire so good although i watched like the first episode of the season that it recommended it might just be the first one and oh my god those guys are like breaking their metal all over the place does it get Mm -hmm. better do they learn no this wasn't the first season this was like they brought back people that didn't finish from previous seasons and they like got eliminated before the end and they're now they're like redemption and i'm like okay cool so they know what they're doing but no they don't so i'm really excited to keep watching that and then i started listening to a new podcast which i should not be listening to but it's called let's not meet and it's a podcast where people send in their short stories of real events of things where like people do really really creepy stuff to them around them in their direction and they're just like at the end of each of these little stories they're like guy with the creepy whatever let's never meet again or let's not meet again because they were like so creeped out by these people so they call it a true horror podcast because it is these horrifying moments with other people or things happening yeah where like if they didn't have something happen right before the end of the story they probably would either be dead or some Ooh. other horrible things I, happening I, to them. I, I, I need the mailing address of that podcast because I have this story about this guy who started watching my YouTube channel. And then he started, <laughs> he, I was into the woodworking show and he followed me around at the woodworking show. And then we had a meetup afterwards and he hung out there. And I just have not been able to shake this guy. <laughs> I did not follow you around at the woodworking show. <laughs> I know, but it made the story more interesting. I was embellishing to make the story more interesting. Well, I, I, I'm, I was make... up in the rafters with the sniper rifle. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh man, I, I just lost what I was going to tell you. I, I was, I was listening to. You. I actually, I actually... Well, mine, my ahead, habits Mark. haven't changed. I'm still watching Alec Ra- or Alec Steele and Forged in Fire. Nice. So lots of forging stuff. Oh, lots of forging. The Bent Tine. Sorry, that's what I've been listening to this week. Michael and I talked about it at the end of the show last week. I was looking for Cat Palmasano's new um, podcast, The Bent Tine, and I really like it. The first couple of episodes were kind of a little rocky, which I think it always is, but uh, it's really starting to pick up, and I'm really enjoying the podcast. 
And I did catch a couple new episodes. I didn't know. I used to love Chad Vader. It was only four seasons. And I found Chad Vader. He's been doing some uh, short cameos on another channel. And I can't remember the channel name. So if you haven't checked it out, look up Chad Vader. C-H-A-D Vader. He's Darth Vader's little brother. And he is the store manager of a grocery store. Is he still married? Uh, As far as I know, he's not. Oh. I thought he was married to Ella. No, that's Darth. Darth is married to Ella. Ch- Chad oh. is his younger brother. He's not married yet. <laughs> but he does go on a, a date in one of the episodes. He falls in love, and he's like really doesn't know how to ask the girl out and all this kind of stuff. It's really funny. Aww. It's really funny. But ch- check out Chad Vader. Okay, Michael. Uh, I, I already said mine was the Alex Steele and Fortune Fire. Okay. So let's do dad jokes. Let's do dad jokes. <laughs> As Rebecca is typing hers in, <laughs> I have them. I have them. They're ready. I've got two, and they're both from Rosetta Hahn this week. She's so great. She finally came back, and she started giving me more dad jokes. Why did she give me one last week too? Okay. <laughs> so from Rosetta Hahn, do you get what do you get when you cross a Christmas tree with an iPad? A pineapple. <laughs> a pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness. Uh, do you want me to tell the next one? Or you yes, want, you want to go, go ahead. Through? Okay. <laughs> How much room is needed for fungi to grow? As much room as possible. <laughs> 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 oh. uh, okay. I'm oh, done. Lordy. <laughs> you up, Quick shout out to Rosetta. Uh, she had an exposure to COVID-19. I, mm, I don't do know if that. she... Hope got a positive that. or negative test back, but last I knew she was at home in quarantine. So I hope you're feeling well and mm-hmm. out of quarantine soon. Yep. Me too. Uh, my, yeah. I think Bob may have told this one already. So if you have, I, I apologize in advance. Um, if you work as a security guard in a Samsung store, does that make you a guardian of the galaxies? <laughs> I don't think I told that one, Michael. So you're okay, safe. I, I mean, yeah. All right. Um, you know, we, we have dad jokes on the show, and they say a joke becomes a dad joke when it becomes a parent. <laughs> I would say, but but me, I would say it's when it's all grown. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, and and Ro- Rosetta bad. was Rosetta was kind enough. <laughs> Rosetta was kind enough to shoot me a, uh, a a joke for the show on Instagram, and it says a copy of a Christmas Carol just fell on my toe. It hurts like the Dickens. <laughs> that was that was very very Christmas very holiday related there very holiday related. So thank you Rosetta, and uh, we, we we're all thinking about you. Get well soon. Anything else before we close out the show? Uh huh. Tell you guys I had a blowout on my car the other day. Oh, here we go. Did I tell this I story? No. I'm going. I'm going to you work told Monday. About somebody else having a blowout and you helping. <laughs> my, I knew Michael would get the tangent sign. That's why I brought this up. <laughs> okay. Where's the other one? Where's the new one I just made? <laughs> <clears throat> it's really a good story, but anyway. Time, time, <laughs> you know, yeah, time. Ooh, what time is the time? Morris Day in the time. Yeah. <laughs> what? The bird. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> we'll go into the after seen... show and I'll tell you all about Morris Day in the time. <laughs> Have you ever seen Purple Rain? What's that? Uh, I was asking her if she ever see, had ever seen Purple Rain. I, I, the... Music video? The, the Prince, the no, Prince the movie. movie. No. Oh, I watch it. The movie. I've heard the song. Yeah, but you haven't heard the bird. The bird is the word? No, no. that's different. That's even older. Okay, oh. look up Morris Day in the Time, the bird, <laughs> on YouTube. Okay. That's your homework. Okay. I already forgot. <laughs> Oh, uh, if anybody wants to find our social media contacts, it is in the show notes. 
That's a good <laughs> Save you a couple minutes. <laughs> we are way over time, so everybody have a great week. I hope you enjoy the holidays. If you have some time off, get out there in your shop. Make something. <clears throat> make something extraordinary, unique. Only you. Show it online so the rest of the world can copy it. Mm -hmm. Make everybody else say, you made that? You made that? Have a great week. Bye. Bye. TTFN. <laughs> Oh, Why God. are you laughing? <laughs> thought thought for now. <laughs> hey, you know, it's, it's my closing. <laughs> Be good. I'll do like Tim Sway. Be good. <laughs> <laughs> and then who gets to do Jimmy Dresta? I love you. Love I you, love man. You. I love you, man. <laughs>